Chernobylite is a game I was looking forward to for a very long time and last week it was finally released in early access. Created by The Farm 51, authors of World War 3 and Get Even, they describe it as a survival horror experience that mixes free exploration with challenging combat, crafting and non-linear storytelling. In today's video I want to take a look at what Chernobylite actually is and talk about some of my first impressions after around 10 hours in it. The most important question people ask is, is this game a stalker's successor? Well, so far I wouldn't call it that. It certainly takes some inspiration from it. It shares the setting, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It is also pretty scary and has amazing atmosphere, but other than that, it is not yet very similar. Chernobylite focuses more on the story and its supernatural elements, along with crafting, taking care of your companions. And while it certainly has potential to become like Stalker in the future, I'm not sure if authors are even trying to go for that. Let's just start off with what the gameplay loop is about. After completing the prologue mission, which introduces you to all the mechanics, you arrive at your base. Now here you can either talk to your companions, move your investigation along, or you can work on the base itself. After you are finished with all of that, you can move on to the map, and from here you can select the different missions for you and for your companions. After selecting a mission and getting transported to it, you can go and complete your objective. I'm gonna talk about the gameplay a bit later, but for now, let's just say you complete the objective, and you come back to your base, and there you can see if your companions completed their missions as well, and you give them food. After that you are free to talk to them, build around your base once again, move on along with your investigation and after all of that is done you go to sleep and end the day. After you wake up you basically restart this loop again. You go to a map, select a mission, complete it, go back to your base, build around it, talk to your companions, complete the investigation and so on. This is the basic gameplay loop we have here. Chernobylite is not an open world game, it consists of levels and you have certain objectives in them. Now unfortunately there are only 3 levels so far and there are around I think 9 or 10 story missions, therefore you're gonna be visiting these levels quite often. Now what is interesting is that once you get a mission, you have certain amount of time to complete it. Usually story missions have around 3 days limit, but when it comes to other different side quests like searching for supplies, cleaning a fridge and so on, they can usually be done in one day. So therefore you have to decide which side objectives and which main objectives are you going to pursue that day because if you don't do time management right you might miss some important story mission and therefore lose a clue and therefore your investigation is not going to go that well. Now let's take a look at gameplay itself. It can be split into three parts. 50% is exploration, 25% is combat and 25% is sneaking around. Let's start off with exploration. The levels themselves are absolutely beautiful. Authors actually went to Chernobyl exclusion zone and 3D scanned most of the environments and it really shows. They are atmospheric, they are a lot of fun to explore around and what is even better is that authors actually filled them with uh, different things. Everywhere around the map you can have random encounters with different people, soldiers or hallucinations, some scary moments and generally the levels just feel alive. When it comes to other two parts, the sneaking and combat, well those still need some work. The AI is very stupid, I can basically sneak right behind them, light the flashlight in their face and they do not care, so sneaking is very easy. When it comes to combat, they are a bit, uh, how would I say it, not smarter but harder to beat because it looks like their weapons don't need to reload, they have pinpoint accuracy and as soon as they see you and lock you in, you are basically done. On your side you only have two weapons, the shotgun and revolver. Shotgun is pretty overpowered, it can destroy enemies in one hit, but the revolver is absolutely abysmal. If I was you, I would avoid combat as much as possible, at least in the beginning, until you fight a lot of supplies, including things like first aid kits and a lot of ammunition. When it comes to the feeling of combat, it is clunky like I said, but you're not gonna be playing this one for the combat or for the sneaking. You're mainly going to be playing this for its story, atmosphere and exploration and that is great, absolutely perfect. And since we're already on it, let's talk a little bit about the story. You're playing as an engineer called Igor, who goes to the Chernobyl to look for his fiance that was lost here 30 years ago. Now the story so far seems complex and uh, it looks like it will feature a lot of different characters and a lot of plot twists. This early access doesn't delve too much into it, but it still shows a very important element of the game, the different choices you can make. For example, right at the beginning, you can decide if you want to press the AZ5 button or if you don't want to. And from what I could gather, that basically decides what your first mission is going to be. And as the story 
story progresses, you have more and more choices that snowball onto each other, and it is possible to have a completely different outcome of the story than someone else has. Now, I already mentioned base building before, but uh, I want to touch it briefly here. What I like about it is that all the things you build have a purpose. In your base, it is important to keep your companions happy and also have all the things that you need for a living. And there are these two meters that measure that. So if you're going to build a power generator, it's not going to be very pleasant for the residents, but you can increase that by making them good beds, uh, having some plants, a TV or a radio. Like I mentioned before, all the things that you build are useful. You can either use them for companions or for yourself. And there is no useless clutter here. And that is what I like. I really hate building systems that have tons of useless things. Building system itself is pretty good. I, know I didn't have any problems with it. Since this is an early access, everything is not perfect. I especially had problems with sound. A lot of dialogue is not voiced. There were some times where the dialogue just cut off. Sometimes the subtitles didn't work. And I think that is very important thing to work on because because if you have a story driven game and your voice acting cuts off along with your subtitles and sound, well that makes all of your important story scenes seem a lot less impactful. Of course I do have some problems with the gameplay loop as well. The time limit is, is not good. You can't combine an exploration game that rewards slow pace with a time limit that makes you hurry and is like combining Call of Duty with a puzzle game. It just doesn't work. Please remove the time limit or make it higher or ju just don't do it at all, I don't think it works in this game. Surprisingly though, performance was pretty good, game looks absolutely amazing on ultra settings. Most of this gameplay was captured on high because I didn't want to try out the ultra because the authors themselves said that it's still an experimental state, but once I did, I personally didn't have any problems with it, the FPS was stable. However, I do have a pretty strong computer and I saw some people complaining about the performance, so I'm not sure how it is going to run on your computer, it looks like it is very individual. So far, the game offers around 10 hours of content and the most important question, is this worth buying? Well. When you're buying an early access game, the most important thing to remember is that you're doing it to support the developers. Of course, you want a good game out of it, but you have to expect that there isn't that much content and that there will be bugs and performance problems. So far, I don't regret my purchase of Chernobylite. I did enjoy it, I can see a lot of potential in it. I would recommend it to people that like a good atmosphere, Chernobyl exclusion zone, like to get scared and enjoy an interesting story with a lot of uh, different options that can make the story outcome a bit different. But if you're looking for a stalker successor, you're not going to find it here, Chernobylite is its own game. And like I mentioned before, I'm not really sure if authors are even trying to go for a stalker vibe. What I like about the authors is that they are constantly releasing new updates and bug fixes and that they are active in the Steam forum answering any questions people have. Personally, I do like Chernobylite. I think it has a lot of potential and if it continues going this way, I think it can become a next cult classic. So hopefully this early access will be a success and Matras will have enough money to finish its development. Hey, ты чё, новенький? В смысле новенький? Ага, новичок на районе. And yeah guys, I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, I know that this wasn't a classic I used to, I usually do. It uh, was unscripted. It was basically just my first impressions. I wanted to get this out as soon as possible. And I will be making a full review of this game sometimes in the future. Now, I already made a community post about this, but the next uh, few videos are going to be about DayZ. Uh, I'm gonna be making Is It Worth Buying for that game. Then I'm looking forward to Outer Worlds. I will be playing it as soon as it comes out, or at least I hope so. And then I'm going to be playing Endero because I didn't play a Skyrim mod for like five or six years, and I'm really looking forward to that. So that's about it for my next project. And there is also a slight chance I will be making a follow video, but don't really count on that one because I'm busy with life and other projects I just mentioned. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. Subscribe for more Fallout and other games content. And I will see you next time.